Hi guys, Susu here from the Sweetness of Health channel. It is Monday night. It's a little late in the evening, but this is the time that I can get to, uh, this is the opportunity that I have to actually videotape and do a little podcast for you. And last time that I sent a video, which was last week, I promised that I was going to talk about stress. And so that's something that I want to do tonight. And I hope that you guys can just kind of keep up with me. It's I'm not going crazy with medical terms. It's just going to be kind of a very short, downsized version of how stress affects our body on a physiological level. And so we're going to get right into it. Um, we're going to talk about good stress. We're going to talk about bad stress. We're going to talk about the two hormones that affect it and the two nervous, the two um, what they call systems within the nervous system that affect the body when it's good stress and when it's bad stress. So let's just start right now. But before we do, I wanna just uh, mention a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician. I'm not saying this as a uh, recommendation for anyone. This is strictly for educational purposes. Everyone um, should do their own research. And, um, and if they need to have or follow the advice, if they need help, uh, with any ailments, they should follow the advice of a holistic practitioner. And I emphasize that holistic practitioner. Um, so that this way, if you have any concerns, you can get blood work done, they can do a proper evaluation and check up on you. And, um, and then you have your answers. But I'm talking about this today, because there are so many uh, friends and family and clients that I know that are really bugging out with stress. Um, it affects us on every level, and because it affects us on every level, some people wind up having emotional breakdowns, some people wind up having physical breakdowns, and some people wind up having both, which affects everybody. It's not just one person that's affected, it's everybody. Because when you have a family member that you love and care about, and you see that they're not able to handle the stress, that they're enduring, uh, and they and they're breaking down in front of you, it's a it's a hard place to be in. It's a very challenging place to be in, and so you want to do your best to help them. Uh, and as well, this information is for for you, so that you can have the ability to know the signs, and then possibly I could give you some suggestions on what you can do and what you should avoid. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna dive right in. I have my notes in front of me. I'm going to pop my glasses on on my head and I'm going to get right to it and forgive the um, distraction of the light that I have over here in front of me. I'm sorry about that. So we basically deal with average stress every single day. So average stress is, you know, being stuck in traffic, running late for an important meeting, uh, riding a major transit um, like in New York City. I've done that. It's uh, very stressful. Uh, you know, maybe public speaking, managing um, a company, and having a bunch of employees underneath you that have to answer to you, and then you have to answer to, you know, um, your boss or bosses. You know, um, confrontation. And with confrontation, I am not referring to a violent confrontation initially. I'm saying. It could be a confrontation as simple as approaching someone and and being able to say to them, hey, there was something that you did that uh, made me feel uncomfortable. People have a hard time even doing that. So that's what I mean by that. Taking an exam, maybe. Um, these are all normal things that we go through on a daily basis. And normally, it's about kind of this wave of hormones that are going, you know, in and throughout our body as these situations arise. For the most part, once that's over, that little uh, overexcitement, whatever it may be, the hormones kind of just readjust themselves and they balance and, and we're all good. But there's a lot of times that, that they don't and we're not all good. So let's just talk about the two systems that deal with this. There's the parasympathetic, right? And then there's the sympathetic. The sympathetic nervous system actually uh, shoots off from 
the hypothalamus, which sends a system to uh, a signal to the pituitary, which then sends a signal to the uh, adrenals. Those adrenals sit on top of our kidneys and they're like a little, kind of like a diamond shape, but they're really small and they sit, each one sits on top of the kidneys. And then, so that's where you hear uh, people referring to, oh, you know, I just got such a rush. Well, they, they probably did get a real rush, you know, because those kidneys can shoot off epinephrine. They can shoot, you know, the adrenals, uh, which shoot off adrenaline or another word for it is epinephrine, which is by the way, what they use in hospitals for patients for various conditions. Uh, one of them is asthma. I remember because I used to get shots in the hospital. I was a very bad asthmatic as a child and as an adult. And so I'm very familiar with it. And these are the things that, you know, uh, come out of the kidneys. So you have epinephrine, you have cortisol, you have glucocorticoid, which is a part of the cortisol or the adrenal cortex. Cortisol sits in that, and then it shoots off this um, glucocorticoid um, hormone. And that hormone, um, it deals with a lot of things. It deals with sleep. It deals with heart rate. It deals with weight. And that's why a lot of people say, well, if you're not getting enough rest, you could be not losing weight because you're not resting properly. Or um, if you're not getting enough downtime, or I like to call it decompressing, then that cortisol is continuing to build up, right? Now, there is a factor with age. There is a factor with um, diet. Lifestyle has everything to do with your stress levels. And so we're talking about the kidneys, we're talking about the adrenals, we're talking about the effects that it has on your body. And what can you do about it? First, you got to understand it. Those cute little kidneys, right? They have uh, a serious series of important jobs to do for our body. They keep our heart rate going. Um, they keep our temperature going and they know how to adjust it to our environment. They keep our weight in check. Um, they're able to deal with our mood. They are able to deal with our emotional state. They are able to deal with our energy level. So when we are uh, fatigued or when we need to have energy, right? Um, they deal with metabolism. So if they're dealing with metabolism, then they are also dealing with um, minerals such as sodium and potassium channels that have to deal with our heartbeat, our, our blood flow. All of those checks and balances have to be, you know, perfect in order for this beautiful machine that we call the human body to be working optimally, okay? Now there is the um, sympathetic, parasympathetic. So the sympathetic releases that fight or flight, the epinephrine, okay? And that deals with survival mode. The parasympathetic, I'm, I'm making this as short as possible because I don't want this video to be like extremely long. I know you could find this stuff somewhere else. The parasympathetic deals with the feel good hormones, okay? Now with the sympathetic, I just mentioned two, cortisol and epinephrine and, and how they affect the body. So I'm gonna give you a really quick um, explanation of that. So the epinephrine is a quick release of the um, hormone into your bloodstream and it's preparing you, as I said before, for the flight or fight, uh, which is the survival mode. Um, and people tend to, you know, lose consciousness if it goes so fast through their body. People tend to throw up, people tend to have um, anxiety, you know, to deal with that. Um, and then there are external factors as well. So if you're smoking cigarettes, that also raises your, um, it will raise your blood pressure and, and that's not good, which in turn has a, um, a negative effect that it can have a domino effect on different things that, um, are not good for your body from raising your heart rate to, um, to creating that anxiousness to, um, um, 
making you feel um, nauseous, as I said before. Uh, again, these hormones deal with metabolism. They deal with immunity as well. Uh, blood pressure. Um, they are the driving force. Some of them are the driving forces of keeping us calm. And so we need to be able to know how to manage it if you can recognize it. There are times that I could be stressed and because things might be just out of my control, right? You ever had one of those days, <laughs> everyone has, where it's, it's just out of your control, right? And the only thing you could do is take a deep breath and say, okay, well, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I'm trying my best. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. And then all of a sudden you might have like this, not might, but you do, you have this calmness and you just say, I'm just gonna go with the flow. When people keep fighting and having that high tension, anxiety, you're doing nothing for yourself. You're not helping yourself at all. So if you can be aware of that and you can step back, take a deep breath and say, okay, I don't need to, I don't need to push this any longer. I'm doing everything I can to control the situation that I'm in. If I can't control it, then let me take a step back. That's number one. Number two, lifestyle. Lifestyle is everything. And remember, we're talking about the adrenals. The adrenals sit on top of the kidneys and those kidneys are part of your life force. Okay, so drinking, vaping, I'm going to say all of the things that most people do. You probably won't like it, but I don't care because it's the truth. Now, however you want to do your recreational, some people smoke weed, some people have their drink. It's okay to have a drink occasionally, uh, but you don't need to drink like two cases, three cases of beer to the point that, you know, you get alcohol poisoning or you're so stone drunk, you wind up crashing yourself in a car or something, or you wind up hurting other people by accident because you were not smart enough to drink too much. Um, you don't have to do the recreational thing. You don't have to have, you know, uh, this peer pressure of wanting to fit in. Be yourself, be unique, okay? So all of those terrible things, eat the right foods, stop eating crap foods. It's gonna affect your kidneys. Stop drinking so much coffee. Um, hydrate your body. You could take minerals on your own. There, there are minerals that you could buy, really good minerals, and you can add that to the water. Sometimes it tastes really nasty though. So you, you want to put it in like a juice instead of plain water. Like it tastes really, I am really good with bitter herbs. But when it comes to minerals, that's a whole nother nasty. I just can't. I have to have a juice to put them in. Um, and then you want to go with the feel good stuff. And the other thing, this is the feel good stuff. So this is four different, I already mentioned some of the bad stuff, right? We're 13 minutes in, I mentioned some of the bad stuff and the bad stuff is, you know, diet, exercise, um, food, nutrient dense foods, stay away from the greasy stuff, hydrate your body, get proper rest and exercise, exercise. You know, play an instrument, sing if you want to, dance if you want to, but just do this, nice, good stuff that makes your body feel so good that those feel good hormones come up. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, endorphins. Endorphins really are for actually painkiller, all right? They're the natural painkiller. Um, the oxytocin is the feel good, like when a mother, when a mother is breastfeeding her baby or when a person is having that piece of chocolate cake or for me it's carrot cake <laughs> or um a hug from someone that you haven't seen in a long time or you know just a a quick you know smile those are oxytocin right serotonin also helps with um feeling good and blood pressure and all of that and 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 balancing the body um so all of these things all of these things help it also reduces inflammation in the body um, and so if we could just think about shifting over from the negative things, the toxic things, I'm talking about also, you know, being in that fight or flight when you're in a toxic family or relationship, whether it's in, in your business life, work, or your personal life, these are things you have to work out, right? Because it's just going to keep affecting you in the most negative way, right? So you have to think about things 
how am I going to work this out? How am I going to shift this? First and foremost, start exercising. Stay in prayer. And prayer doesn't mean you have to sit there with a the Bible. We're talking about meditation, prayer, yoga, tai chi, um, and exercise, exercise, whatever you want it to be. You could run, you could walk, you could hike, you could bike. You know, you could, you know, now the weather is not, you could go on a kayak, you could go on a canoe. I love canoeing. And these are things that make you feel so good, so great. Um, and they just lift you up. Those are the feel-good hormones, okay? Now, some people, when they are coming off of things like smoking too much weed, um, drinking too much liquor or beer, doing cocaine, doing whatever else, there is a deficit in their body's level of minerals and vitamins. And so they will need to have some supplementation, right? And again, you go to a holistic practitioner, you get yourself a full blood panel. And that full blood panel will tell you where your thyroid is. Because when your kidneys start going bad, it affects your thyroids, your thyroid gland as well. I know from a personal um, experience with a family member, you have to, I mean, the kidney was just shooting off of nothing but epinephrine for weeks and months. And this person almost lost her life. And gosh, she's still with us today. And unfortunately, because of not taking care of that, she doesn't have her thyroid, right? That's what the kidneys did from shooting off too much. You could also lose your sight, all right? You could have a heart attack. We don't want these things, right, people? We don't want these things. So I wish that people could take a chart and see their organs on the outside just for a moment and see when that outside, when that organ is being neglected, I'm going to say neglected, I'm not going to say abused, because I don't think that any of us do anything to ourselves deliberately to abuse ourselves. I really don't. I think we just neglect ourselves in different times in life. And so, and that's okay, because we're human, right? So what I'm thinking is if you see that, and you can say to yourself, well, that that little kidney there, that adrenal gland doesn't look so hot. Let me do something about it. And then you start nurturing it. When you do that with each organ of your body, and then you, you, then you take into consideration, you start thinking, oh, wow, I did this with um, the kidneys, and now it's going to affect my heart, and it's going to affect my brain, and it's going to affect my liver and my gallbladder, you know, and, and, and my digestive system and my nervous system. If we could take into, if we could kind of pull that all together and realize that our bodies are connected, all of these organs are connected to each other, you cannot think that they're separate. And I think I get that impression from so many people, you know, this is not connected to that. And I don't know what they're thinking. I have no idea what they're thinking. That's my thought. I am passionate about the human body. I was very sickly as a child. I had asthma. I was on all kinds of medications. Steroids was one of them. It destroyed a lot of things for my body that I had to take years to continue to build on my body, right? And because of that, and I've also seen with my own eyes, I've seen people come back almost from the dead. So I am in love with this magnificent machine that we call the human body. And I hope that you fall in love with your body. And, and let me know in the comments below, give me a thumbs up. Let me know um, what you're going to do to change your lifestyle, to make yourself better. Because if you do, if you just start taking this, the other thing I wanted to say before I, I, I close out with this is that, um, you know, we need to have, when you're going down the list of don'ts, aside from, you know, don't smoke, don't drink in excess, you know, um, do exercise, you know, don't, um, um, don't be angry all the time, you know, don't be conflicting, you know, don't eat bad food. I think we also have to do, include in that, like, um, do have a goal and a schedule and some discipline and some prayer meditation. And by that, I mean yoga, 
hiking, biking, I have mentioned this before, um, whatever it might be, playing music. And when I mean music, you know, um, listening to your favorite music, your favorite tunes, but things that are upbeat, things that are upbeat, right? That's what I do when I need to have a lift. I listen to something. And if you're a musician, God bless you. Play that musician, play, play that musician, play that instrument so that you can have some really good, um, feel good hormones shooting through your body and making you feel amazing. You will have a robust recovery from whatever ails you. You can do this. You can change your life around. You can change your health around. If I can do it, you can do it. So let me know what you're going to do to improve your lifestyle and how you can help your kidneys. I'm talking about kidneys today and stress. That's what I'm talking about. So you can make a comment um, and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and please remember from the bitterness of disease, that's when we learn the sweetness of health. This is Susu signing off and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.